here, let's walk through this. It may take me a second, but let's walk through this from a super high level. Um, a Twitter user in the US can send a tweet and that tweet can be received by a user in Japan, by a user in Africa, by a user in the Middle East, right? Now, what if though that user in Japan wanted to tip you, Pomp, for this amazing show and your amazing tweets and you had your Venmo account linked? Out of luck, out of luck. And so what the internet did for communication is before, if you wanted to send a message to someone in Japan a long time ago, you would write it on a thinly sliced piece of wood and you'd send a fucking pigeon to go fly it across and hope that they delivered, you know, the, the pigeon spits your note out at whoever you want to read it. And you're like, hey, what are you doing for dinner? And a pigeon spit is all over the, the message that you tried to send. Now you can send a tweet. What the internet did to communication is it gave the world a singular global protocol. So whether you want to ask a friend what they're doing for dinner, whether you want to Google the best restaurant in town, whether you want to buy tickets to the bear game, all of those communication efforts are all just an internet request, an HTTPS TCP IP request. The internet is one singular protocol for communication. So now you can use that protocol to send a message, again, to a user in Japan, to a user in Saudi Arabia, to a user in South Africa. It all works globally. Now let's revisit money today. Today, money is still in pigeon land. Money is still in uh, riding a horse carriage to deliver newspaper land, where if you're in the US, you've got Cash App and Venmo. You know, Western Union is for remittance, but if you go to Starbucks, do you use Western Union? No, you use your Visa card. But if you're online and you buy some merchandise, you use Stripe. They're independent, bifurcated, closed networks to accomplish monetary settlement. What Bitcoin and the Lightning Network does is it gives the world a global singular protocol for monetary settlement in the same way that the internet is a global singular protocol for communications, okay? And so now all of a sudden, Pomp, if your Venmo account is linked to your Twitter account, can someone from Japan tip you a penny? No. But if you're hooked into the singular global interoperable monetary protocol for the world, can they tip you a penny over the Lightning and Bitcoin network? Yes. And there are so many precursors that people don't appreciate. In order to have that, you'd have to have a money that works everywhere in the world, that lives outside of a governance by a nation state, that lives outside of an issuance from a nation state, from a company. So Bitcoin as the only digital bear instrument on the planet is a precursor to this experience. And then on top of that, you need a protocol that can allow it to achieve instant physical bear instrument settlement and free physical bear instrument settlement. And that's the Lightning Network. And combined, what the internet did for communication, Bitcoin and the Lightning Network is doing for money. And you violently see that with Twitter. My phone won't stop fucking going off. Hey, thanks from Japan. Hey, thanks from Saudi Arabia. No other monetary network, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Chime can do that except this one. And so rant over, but that's what this is about. I've had people in the last couple of hours, somebody sent me 25 bucks, somebody sent me a penny, somebody sent me a dollar, somebody just now while we were on said, sending tips while the show with Jack Mahler's is going on just to illustrate the point, right? Literally, people are just sending this over Twitter. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that we hammer home the point of separating Bitcoin, the asset, from Bitcoin, the network. Nobody claimed that this was good marketing, but the difference between Bitcoin, the asset, and Bitcoin, the network is really important here because actually what they're sending me and what they're sending you is not Bitcoin. They are sending dollars across the Lightning Network using those rails. So describe how that's occurring and why it's so important that the rails can be used regardless of the actual or agnostic to the currency that the sender and receiver wants to use. Yeah. So. I've been working on the Lightning Network in Bitcoin for close to a decade. And initially, the Lightning Network, for those that don't know, we set out to achieve two things as a distributed set of open source developers working on it. It was one, can we accomplish and solve the variable time it takes for Bitcoin to achieve finality? So traditionally, the Wall Street Journal will write a headline, your Bitcoin transactions may take days, right? You can't buy coffee with a transaction that takes fucking days. The second is your Bitcoin transactions are really expensive. They're too expensive, right? The throughput can't match Visa. 
and it's too expensive to buy coffee. So the Lightning Network was, can we solve those two? Can we make finality instant and can we make finality free? And then when once we accomplished that pump, we realized like, hold on a second. Oh my God, this is a monetary network that is able to achieve settlement at no cost anywhere in the world and instantly. And if you fuck Bitcoin, the asset for a second, fuck the digital gold thing for a second. Tell Michael Saylor to just like shut his piper for one fucking second. And let's talk about the fact that the Visa network can't do that. The PayPal network can't do that. The Western Union network can't do that. Matter of fact, no monetary network in human history can do that. So instead of making people spend their Bitcoin, which they don't want to do, if you just hold your Bitcoin, you just get rich. Why would you spend it? Make people call up an accountant with all the tax consequences, make people go to Harvard and get a cryptography course to set up a Lightning Network node. Uh uh. What if I allowed you to link your checking account or your debit card, just like you do for Cash App or Venmo, and allowed you to use this monetary network under the hood to gain the instant free global benefits that it gives you? So let's walk through a remittance example. If I'm sending money from the US to Japan, I have my Chase checking account linked. Strike is going to debit the money from my Chase checking account. I send $100 to Japan. Strike behind the scenes is going to take $100 out of my Chase account. I don't need to know what Bitcoin is, how it works. I don't need to think it's going up or down. I just have my checking account linked. Strike takes $100, programmatically converts into Bitcoin on the Lightning Network, zips that value across oceans, across borders, all the way to Japan. And that physical value, that physical bare digital instrument Bitcoin is going to get from the United States in this gorgeous fucking women's closet into Japan in one second and at no cost. And then we just convert it into Japanese yen because it's the only digital bare instrument global commodity that has the liquidity profile on every single currency 24-7. So we go from dollars, Bitcoin, bang, Japanese yen, give them the Japanese yen. And all of a sudden, nobody knows Bitcoin was involved in that. And Bitcoin, the asset, and whether it's the better version of gold or not, doesn't matter. We're just using it, the network, to make for more efficient global singular monetary standard settlement. And that's the most innovative thing of all time. I mean, are you kidding me? 